Woodburn lies at the heart of or one of Oregon's richest agricultural regions and has been dependent on Latino farm workers since the 1940s, including both Mexican-born immigrant workers and Mexican-Americans who came from Texas and other parts of the Southwest, particularly in the 1950s and 60s. Although the regional economy was dependent on farm worker labor, the living conditions of farm workers are often appalling, and most farm workers and between the 1940s and 1980s lived in labor camps, as shown in this 1960s photo. So the presence of farm workers in Oregon uh, was, was hidden and, and less visible to most towns in the northern Willamette Valley through the 1980s because most were housed on, in labor camps and outside of town. This all began to change in the 1980s and really is a focus of my research. In the 1980s, a series of events converged to encourage farm workers to settle permanently in towns such as Woodburn. Changes in the regional economy lengthened the hiring season, which encouraged people to live year-round rather than migrate seasonally for work in Oregon. But also, we saw changes in U.S. immigration policy and economic transformations in Mexico that all came together in the 1980s to cause the, uh, the number of farm workers coming to the northern Willamette Valley to increase significantly. And so for towns in Woodburn, in the, by the mid-1980s, you saw uh, emerge a, a farm worker housing crisis. As this newspaper attests, in, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, story after story talked about the fact that farm workers are often living in overcrowded housing in town or sleeping in parks or in their cars because affordable housing was short and yet the regional economy was drawing in more and more workers. And this was a crisis both for farm workers and for longtime residents in the community, both white and Mexican American. Into this situation came the Farm Worker Housing Development Corporation, which uh, was formed by a coalition of farm worker advocacy groups in 1991. And they sought to find solutions to the farm worker housing crisis by using credit and bank loans uh, to build decent, affordable, and uh, centrally located farm worker housing in towns such as Woodburn. What I, what I looked at in my research was the process by which Farm Worker Housing Development Corporation uh, built the farm worker housing, which eventually became Nuevo Manacer, which was our first housing unit, and later was called Esperanza Court. And what I looked at was really the resistance on the part of many of the city officials and planning commission that were still predominantly white at the time to the construction of farm worker housing in the city limits. And what is interesting is that it seemed like it seemed to be a win-win situation because the efforts of the Farm Worker Housing Development Corporation were going to alleviate what was clearly a crisis in the community. But it was a long struggle over over several years. But eventually they were able to build Nuevo Manacer, which is shown here, and eventually also build what is called Esperanza Court, which is located in the heart of downtown Woodburn. And in my, in my work, I argue that, that the construction of these two housing units really carved out a space of belonging for residents who were fundamental to the regional economy, but who had for many decades been excluded and less visible in labor camps. And today I would say that Woodburn, in part because of the struggles over farm worker housing and the, the extent that they've been such a huge success uh, in the community, has really created some more spaces of pluralism and diversity in Woodburn. And, and today we have a, a town that much more embraces its identity. I don't want to suggest that racism and discrimination have disappeared from Woodburn, but I think these are visible manifestations of a, a claiming of belonging and a recognition of different cultures and embracing that in the town of Woodburn.